Hi, I'm Aldias in Medium, and thank you so much for tuning in today. I want to try to bring religion and spirituality closer together, and this is what this pod is all about. I will talk about my own thoughts and feelings as I am both LDS and have spiritual gifts, something that I've had my whole life, but I always thought that it was hard to combine these gifts with my religion. This has torn me into two directions, and I have talked to many people who feel the same way. I can't choose not to have my spiritual gifts, but I can choose how I use them, and I always want to use them for good and to help others. I believe my heavenly parents gave them to me for a reason, so this is me. Join my quest for knowledge. First Nephi 7 Does it sound weird that reading verse 1 and 2 in chapter 7 gives me hope? In these two verses, God not only tells Lehi that his sons need to marry, but also that he has a plan of whom they are going to marry, namely the daughters of Ishmael. So he had a plan, not just that they needed to marry, but he also had chosen who. That gives me hope that he will have chosen someone for me too. I just need to figure out who. And Ishmael had his heart softened by the words of the Lord that they spoke to him, and he took his family and they went with them into the wilderness. I find it interesting that two daughters of Ishmael did rebel with Laman and Lemuel, and some sons and their families. That speaks of a vibrational match between two daughters that had the same vibrations as Laman and Lemuel. I suppose that those were the ones that ended up marrying them. So Nephi starts to prophesy, which doesn't go very well with his brothers. They bind him and hurt him and plan to take his life. One of Ishmael's daughter and her mother and son starts to plea for Nephi's life. In such a patriarchal society, that it was then, where was Ishmael during this ordeal? What does it mean pleading on behalf of Nephi? Or actually, since he was an elder, he could simply tell his children not to participate. But it says nothing of him taking a stand for Nephi. And in his silence, does that mean he actually is okay with the behavior of Laman and Lemuel and some of his children? That was just a thought that came to me. It says that their pleading for Nephi's life changed their hearts and they became sorrowful and they bowed down, pleading with him to forgive them. Nephi, being a much bigger person than me, forgave them on the spot and told them to ask God of forgiveness too. I wonder how Nephi so easily could forgive them after they heard him and actually wanted to kill him. Here I'm struggling with betrayal and lies and the hurt of that, but no one actually has tried to kill me. Why is it so hard for me to find forgiveness in my heart? But for me, it is two parts. It's the leaving and it's the how of leaving. I have accepted and forgiven the leaving and I understand that that was necessary for my highest good. It is the emotional betrayal and the hurt of how this came to pass that I still struggle with forgiving. Because in my head, if I say I forgive, that means it's okay for me and that I accept what was done and how it was done, and think that it is okay, and it is not okay, and the way it was done will never be okay for me, because it is so far from resonating with who I am, and I guess, in one way, it's like when you say to a child, I love you, but I don't love your actions right now. This thinking in my head is healing for me, to have the opportunity to really think this through, and find other views and thoughts to help me on my path of healing. So I guess what I'm saying is I admire Nephi and how he could just forgive and let go. And I wish I had a little more of Nephi in me. His unwavering faith that the Lord will abide him, which he did in loosening up the bands that were holding him bound. Let's all bring a little more Nephi into our lives and into our hearts. Let's have his courage and his strength and his passion for the Lord with us as we go about this week. And until next time, be the light, share the light, spread the light, and shine. This is my journey. Thank you so much for keeping me company today. Please download, like, share, and subscribe, and help spread the light and spread the word to expand our community. Let's bring more love, peace, and unity to this world. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. Always be grateful, kind, and loving. Be brave and remember to step out of your comfort zone and smile. If you support us on Patreon, you will get access to our meditations and extra materials so you can download them as mp3. Also, we now have a Facebook group, which you can access from our Facebook community. 
Please answer the questions as you apply to participate. It will be a safe haven where we can keep discussing religion and spirituality, our spiritual gifts and self-development. Remember, one person can make a difference, but together we can change the world.